guys, welcome back to my channel. This is me, Novita Hardini. And this special moment, I take this video because this is my individual assignment as a student of MBA regular program at Me International Business School. And I think this is uh, one of my first knowledge sharing in my content. I hope you enjoy, but before you watch the video, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and click the bell button let's talk through this mind mapping i will try to explain the process of the learning and the thing that i have learned about corporate finance from professor royce symbol so even in this two months it's very 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 short class for us i mean the member of this subject but it was so truly interesting journey of learning corporate finance because in this subject our future sector and lecturer is an expert on finance and ex and investment and then prof roy samuel teach me and also inspire me how to read a class online but still a lot of fun well this is my first thing in every class is taking picture with sticker like this picture and we move to the first chapter. The first chapter, we all can see that in corporate finance, we got the lesson about financial management and also capital budgeting, analysis of securities, capital structure, fraud risk management, corporate restructuring, international finance, dividend policy portfolio theory, template of many, and also how we can make a market efficiency in the company. And let's start from financial management in this slide. Financial management means planning, organizing, directing, and controlling the financial activity, such as procurement and utilization of funds of the enterprise. It means applying general management principles to financial resource of the enterprises. The financial management is generally concerned with procurement allocation and control of financial resources. And the objective can be influenced investment decision include investment in the fixed asset. And by this picture, we all can see that the chapter explains the function of financial management. For the first, we talk about the value creation principle. This content gives me a lesson about core of value, conservation of value, expectation, fit, feel, and the best order. The point of value creation principle is the process of fit value by investing capital to generate future as low at weight of reason that exceed their cost of capital. In the next we are study about principal agent problem. Principal agent problem is talking about asymmetric information, moral hazard, conflict to interest, and after that, I also learn about good corporate government. Good corporate government is consists of transparency and accountability, responsibility, independency, and also fairness. And finally, we talk about five business essential. In this part, I learn about cash, profit margin, velocity, growth, and also about customer procurement. And also, Prof. Roy Sample teach us how to manage financial management rightly. And then I learn also about capital structure, working capital management, asset structure, revenue management, cost of management, growth management, and risk of management. For the next, we talk about capital budgeting. Capital budgeting is the process a business undertakes to evaluate potential major investment in a fixed asset or investment project. Capital budgeting involves choosing projects that add value to the company. There are some things in capital budgeting lesson that I got from Professor Roy Symbol like time value of money, and then net creation value, and then profitability index, and then future cash flow, and then value versus price, 
and then payback period internal rate of return until fuel 72. And for the next, we talk about analysis of security. The analysis of various tradable financial instruments is called security analysis. Security analysis have a financial expert to determine the value of assets in a portfolio. I learned about investment fraud, passive investing, active investing, and that. And from this chapter, I learned why security analysis is very important because it helps to calculate value of various assets. And the next, we're going to know the difference between fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Fundamental analysis refers to the evaluation of security with the help of certain fundamental business factors, such as a financial statement, current interest rate, as well as competitor product and financial market. And also about technical analysis, I learned that this technique refers to the analysis of security and has the finance professional to forecast the price trend through cash price trend and market data. In fundamental analysis, we talk about portfolio theory. Portfolio theory has portfolio manager to calculate the amount of return as a well with for any investment portfolio. So we move in the next chapter. I learned about capital structure. First, we have to know why do different companies have different capital structure. Because the firm in different industry will use capital structure better suit to their type of business capital intensive industry. Like auto manufacturing may utilize more depth while labor intensive or service oriented firms. And also in this chapter, I learned about how optimal capital structure and how can I define about dynamic of gap and equity. In the optimal capital structure, I can define that this is a proportion of gap and equity that result in the lowest wage and average cost of capital for the firm. This technical definition is not always used in practice. And our firms often have a strategic or philosophical view of what the ideal structure should be. And in the dynamic of debt and equality, talk about below it and illustration of the dynamic step and apply from the field and the firm. They have the first claim on the asset on the business in the event of a brand proxy. For this reason, they accept a lower rate often and the firm has a lower cost of capital when it issues them compared to equity. In this chapter, I also learned about tax benefit. Tax benefit generally refers to any tax law that provides you with an opportunity to reduce your tax bill when you satisfy certain eligibility requirements. Tax benefit comes from profitability, tax rate, and also from interest rate. In another words, I also learn about financial distress. Financial distress comes from volatility of cash flow, liquidity, and good corporate government score. I also learn about positive, like move to the right side of optimal debt ratio line, and also negative, move to the left side of optimal debt ratio line. Okay, finally, we talk about cost of capital. And also, I learned about cost of capital. I learned that cost of capital represents the return of company needs to achieve in order to justify the cost of capital project, such as purchasing new equipment or constructing a new building. By calculation of the minimum return that will be necessary in order to justify undertaking capital budget project, 
the strong cost of capital is used by analysis and investors. And also, I know that many companies use a combination of debt and equity to finance business expansion. And the next chapter, we talk about crop risk management. I also learned about profit management. Profit management refers to the process of identifying potential risk in advance by analyzing them and taking precautionary steps to reduce the risk. This financial risk may be in the form of high inflation, volatility in critical markets, recession, or bankruptcy or ETC. In this fraud risk management, I also learn about fraud triangle and fraud prevention. In the fraud triangle, I learn about pressure, financial, and work. And also, I learn about rationalization, opportunity. In the fraud prevention, I learn about the employee, the ethics, the protective, the security, the whistleblower, and also the mechanism. In another word, uh, this topic is really, really important for the country. In this subject, I also learn about corporate restructuring. We can see that for types of corporate restructuring, there are operational restructuring. And I learned that operation restructuring tell about aim to extend the scope of action for the company to give confidence to stakeholders, especially leaders, but also its employee and supplier by helping to solve the problem of suboptimal performance. For the next, I also learn about asset restructuring. Asset restructuring is the process of buying or selling of the company asset that comprise of four more significant it's usually a one-time expense that restructuring takes place. For the next, I also learn about a matrix. A matrix organization structure is a company structure in which the reporting relationships are set up as a grid or matrix rather than in a traditional hierarchy. In other words, employees have a dual reporting relationship generally to both a functional manager and product manager. And for the next, I also learned about leverage buyout is a one company acquisition of another company using a significant amount of borrowed money to meet the cost of acquisition. In another words, the assets of the company being acquired are often used as collateral for the loans. Uh, leverage buyout occurs when purchase a company using almost entire life In the next chapter, I learned about international finance. International finance, sometimes known as international macroeconomics, is the study of monetary interaction between two or more countries focusing areas such as countries, focusing our areas such as foreign direct investment and currency exchange. And also, I got the point from Professor Weissenberg about international financial system, about mathematics of finance, about financial startup, about financial products, about business lifestyle financing, about financial statement analysis, about financial management, about portfolio management. Financial instrument like object and bond market. So it's really interesting. For the next, I also learn about dividend policy.
in the chat, I learned that if you didn't already, already company used the structure, if you didn't fail to shut up. So, the suggested if you didn't already, it's a real man in charge because the investor can sell a portion of their share. Hopefully, if they need. And also, finally, we learned time value of money. <clears throat> finally, I can tell you that I learned about the time value of money. Value of money is the one of the most fundamental concepts in finance. If you do not have a case now, it means you can not earn interest or return or invest, and it is just a loss of opportunity. The time value of money refers to the opportunity. And also, I can define the difference between future value and present value. Future value is the biggest flow of work in time without changing their financial value. Present value is the biggest flow for work in time without changing their financial value. So that's the things I learned from the corporate finance class. In the last class, we also learned about various topics. The first one is that we got the opportunity to learn from movie about finance and investment, such as we watched the Wall Street movie in the last class. From this movie, I learned that a common investor can get good returns from this investment as long as they can be follow a few general investing principles. In other words, this movie explained about investing without research. It's like pulling a poker and never looking at the car. So, this topic is also the end of my video. Before, I would like to thank you to all of you. I will show you about the quote in corporate and investment. So, this topic is also the end of my video. I would like to say thank you to all of you for watching my forward finance my maybe. Do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, and click the bell button. Stay well, safe, and best of luck. See you!